What did one cell say to its sister cell that stepped on its toes? My toes. G'day guys, my name is Rob from conceptualize.tech and welcome to this Blender tutorial using metaballs to illustrate mitosis or cell division. So this is the simple animation we'll be attempting today. It's a simple splitting of cells. So let's get into it. So starting from our classic Blender startup file, the first thing as always is I'm going to go out to Blender Render and change it to Cycles Render. And I'm going to delete the cube and delete the lamp since we won't be using them. So today we're going to be having some fun with metaballs in order to make mitosis. So the action of cell division that's happening in your body all the time. And metaballs are really cool to do that because they have this feature. Say so if I have two metaballs and duplicate the first one, they have this really kind of organic looking um, morphing property. Um, so if we have this cell and it splits, it looks really kind of organic and how cell division actually really happens. Um, to do this with a mesh is actually quite difficult and doesn't, I've never really got it to look as smooth as what a metaball can. Um, so it's really handy to do, uh, make an animation with uh, metaball to make uh, mitosis. Having said that, they do have some pretty serious limitations um, which need to be considered before using them. Um, so you might have noticed that you can only have certain geometries. If I tab into edit mode, I can't really change the mesh. It's not like uh, a normal mesh. Um, so I can't edit it and can't use shape keys and whatever, um, which is a problem. Uh, but they do have, I mean, you have a few different geometries to choose from uh, in order to kind of get around that. Um, so. Hopefully you can use one for your purposes that, uh, you know, gets around that problem. The other limitation is that you can't, or the there's no modifiers tab here. Um, and that's another pretty serious limitation, uh, which stops people using metaballs. Um, the last limitation and that really affects this animation or this tutorial is that you can't have a metaball within a metaball. So if you saw on the start, we had the cell wall and the nucleus splitting at the same time and then forming two cells from one. Uh, but if I duplicate this, I can't have this. It always looks like one big metaball. Uh, if I move it closer or in it, even if I scale it down, you can't ever see two metaballs there. It always looks like one. So to get around this, um, limitation we're going to actually be making two um, animations um, in two blend files and then compiling them later um, and it's pretty easy to do but I haven't figured out any other way to do it yet um, so I think that this is the easiest way um, for something simple like mitosis and uh, it's not let's say not uh, atomically correct mitosis animation but it's kind of uh, an animation that shows that there's something going on within the cell when it splits um, into two cells um, without going into really specifics. So the only thing I'm going to mention with this metaball tab here is this resolution. Um, the, the lower you go with this resolution in the view and render is the better it looks. So if I take the view all the way down to 0.05, we get almost a perfectly looking sphere. And for the render, we can even go lower so that the render actually looks quite good. And we want the lowest resolution we can, so it looks the best. And for our scene, it's going to be pretty basic. I'm just going to click one on my numpad to go to the front view and snap my camera to the view with Alt, Control, Zero. So this is just going to be a very basic uh, one cell that splits into two cells. Uh, you can use your skills, uh, your blender skills to make kind of a more artistically pleasing uh, render animation afterwards, but I'm just here to show you the basics. Um, so I'm going to scale up my scale up my uh, metaball just so that it fills up most of the screen. I'll scale up both of them. Um, and all I'm going to do uh, for the animation is I'll bring up my other toolbar here and I'm just going to make them move from side to side so I'm going to make it start at zero in the center and then at a hundred I will grab it and move it to the side over here and then uh, right click on my mouse and insert the keyframe 
and I do the same with the second one. So at zero, it'll be in the center, so it keyframes, and at 100, I'll move it to the right and so that it's fully split. And I'll change my timeline to end at 100 so that we don't have a massively long animation. So then we, if you play it, it's just splitting. And as I said before, it really splits like organically so that it looks properly like cell division or how I would picture cell division. Uh, perfect. So to set up our scene a little bit, um, as I said, you can't mm, like uh, you can't modify the mesh of the metaballs, so you kind of have to get creative in your materials. Um, the world I'm just going to turn into black so I can see how it will look. By the way, now I'm going to split the view down here into a node editor so I can start messing with the materials of my metaballs and change it to the node editor. Uh, I'm going to click new material and start making a material. So the important thing to think about here, because this is going to be our cell wall and we're going to need nucleus is inside the cell walls, I'm going to need something to be somewhat transparent. Um, but I want the outsides to still be quite um, full of color and quite obvious. So that means that I'm going to need this layer weight node uh, and I'll put it all together in a minute. Um, so I'm going to need a mix shader because I need something that the, the transparent uh, shader will be mixed with. Uh, and that's going to be an emission, but I don't want it to be just a straight uh, emission. I want it to be uh, a mix of two colors um, to kind of simulate that the cell wall might be made of phospholipids, but there's also proteins in the cell wall as well. So I want them to be two different uh, types of emission shaders, kind of showing that there's more going on in a cell wall than just um, its outer layer, let's say. Um, so from my practices, I think that I found that a green and purple um, emission mix looks really cool. Um, course you're free to play with all the colors and do whatever you like maybe you find a better color coordination than I did um, so to really mix these two into separate kind of phases I'm going to have a texture and the texture I'm choosing is a noise texture and to really make that noise texture more obvious I'm going to add this go to the converter tab and add a math node um, so I want from my previous tries I think the scale of 22 works quite well uh, and I click this into the top and change the more the math node into a multiplier and click this into the mix shader of the emission and then I click this one into the bottom of the next mix shader with a transparency and then the layer weight I do a facing uh, node to the mix shader and that looks like nothing what happened Ah, I need to click on the other meta ball to add the material. So something went wrong. Ah, I forgot to add this. The value of my math node needs to be two. And now we can see that our texture of our, um, the noise texture for our emission shaders look quite good, but they don't, they still show like a perfect sphere looking thing and it doesn't look so, it does, it looks too perfect, too sphere. Too spherical. So what I need to do is click the math node and also click that into the displacement of the material output. And then it gives it kind of like a more, I would say more organic and rough surface, uh, like things are moving and it's not so perfectly flat. Uh, and it also seems that the there's not enough transparency in there for me. So I'm going to change this to, to zero one no sorry point zero was it point zero hold on no it wasn't point zero ah. it needs to be point one two five and there we get some sort of transparency uh, enough transparency so that the nucleus will be obvious in our um, final render when we compile it all the only other thing i want to do for this material is just to make it look like things like if we see our movement you can see that now it kind of looks a bit more like a cell at least 
I think it looks like a bit more like a cell. The only thing I want to do is the texture is a bit too static. So I just want to change it a little bit, uh, give it some keyframes, the texture some keyframes to make it look a bit uh, uh, like things are moving in the cell wall. So the proteins might be moving around in the phospholipids. So I'll insert a keyframe again, just right click uh, on the scale and insert keyframe. And then at 100, oh, I'll just go past it actually. I will go to a scale of, what's a good scale? Let's go 12.6, sure. So now when we look at our animation, we have kind of a, a very rough surface of a single cell and then the texture is kind of moving as things are moving and splitting uh, and it goes to a bit uh, of a less uh, mixed um, texture. So I kind of suggest that more things are going on than we can see at this kind of macro scale. Um, so that's all I want to do for that. The only other thing I need to do here is in my render tab because the cell wall is going to have the nucleus inside we need to make this um, the alpha over um, layer of our compiled animation. So that means we'll click this transparent film down here on the render settings um, so that our nucleus can sit inside nicely. Um, so I'll just set up the render settings. Uh, I'll change this to GPU because I have a GPU. Um, leave it CPU if you don't have one I'll, with the resolution at 100. The output I'll keep in the cell wall file that I made earlier where all my practices have gone. In the samplings, uh, I think I'll leave everything the same. The only thing I'll mention is this um, seed value here. I'll click. This basically randomizes all the noise um, per frame, which makes animations look very uh, much better. In the performance tab, I'll change this to 256 because I have a GPU. If you have a CPU, don't worry about it. Leave it at 64, it'll be fine. So that's set up now. I won't start the render yet because we still have to make a blend file of the nucleus. So to do that, I'm just gonna save this as my cell wall file, uh, but then I'll save it again as the nucleus. Yes, I spelled it wrong. Because now the only thing I wanna do to change this into the nucleus is since I only put keyframes for the location and not the scale, I can scale this down and it's at 5.6 at the moment. I'm going to scale it down to be, no, sorry, it's at 2 point, uh, or around 2. I'm going to scale it down to be 0 0.6. There we go. Uh, I don't even need to insert the keyframe actually because it's going to be the same scale throughout and make sure you select the other one as well and scale that down to 0.6 uh, there-ish, good enough I don't think it's noticeable that they're slightly off uh, and now you'll notice that it follows since we copied the the same thing from the last from the cell walls you can see that the keyframes are perfectly aligned so that the nucleus is at the, at the right in the beginning at the start uh, right in the center at the start, and then they follow the exact same pass as the cell wall. So it will follow it perfectly. So we got away with doing uh, some lazy blendering. Um, for the, I don't think I want the same kind of, uh, I'll just give it a test render to see what the material looks like, but I think I want to get rid of the transparency. So I'll, yeah, so I'll click the mix shader from here and click it straight into the surface. And that should give us a better looking uh, nucleus, I think. Uh, but I think I might change the, uh, let's say the green one, I'll change that to like a red, just to give it a bit of a different uh, structure uh, from the cell wall. And I will change the render settings to render into the nucleus PNG folder that I made so that the, the two can render at the same time without um, overlapping each other. And the only thing else we need to change is we don't want it to be transparent anymore. So we can click that off. And so that's all ready to go. I can open up my other... Uh, 
cell wall blend file and I can have them both ready to render. So we are ready to go with our rendering and I will come back when both of them have rendered. Okay, and we're back and both our renders have finished and you'll probably notice that I have cheated a bit and changed the materials of my nucleus uh, a bit. Uh, I wasn't happy with how the colors were so I changed it. Uh, so all I did was change the emissions from uh, what do we have over here, kind of like a green and purple. I changed it to a white and kind of a beige color. And I also brought back the layer weight that I had for this one, but uh, I changed it up a bit. So this one has transparent uh, on top. This one I changed to translucent and put it at the bottom so that we have a translucent kind of uh, background or, or outside. Uh, so now that we've got uh, two, uh, our two renders, we can check them by going up to the render and say play rendered animation and we see our cell splitting uh, into two and as I said it looks very organic uh, how you could imagine cells do split in reality. So now we need to compile them so to do that I'll just bring up one uh, and go to instead of default we go to the video editor and at the zero frame I'll add in the images of the cell wall and add in all of them by clicking A. So they're all added. I'll just move that up a bit and then add in the other image, which is our nucleuses. Oh, I didn't add in all of them. Add image, all of them. And the only thing we need to do is our cell wall, since it's transparent, go over here to the edit strip and in the blend tab, we change it to alpha over. And now we have our nucleus uh, in our uh, in our cell wall and we can play it and we can see the nucleus splits and then the cell wall splits and they're still in the center of the cell wall and it looks quite good perfect now we just need to go over to back to our render settings and instead of PNG we're going to change this to uh, uh, mp4 so ff mpeg video encoding we're going to sit to uh, H264 in MP4. And then we just click animation. And now it'll just take from what we put into the video editor and animate it for us and put it into a movie. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and uh, that you can have a play around with metaballs to do something useful. Um, follow us on uh, or subscribe to us on uh, YouTube to get more of these uh, science based tutorials for Blender. And you can check us out uh, on the web, conceptualize.tech, to see what we've been up lately. And also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. But other than that, I'll see you next time. Happy blendering.